Hey everyone, this is Dan. Today we're gonna move anything in Touch Designer using only our webcam. We're not gonna use anything special other than Optical Flow, but in the end we're gonna get some chop channels out of this component that we're gonna build. Um, this is very useful if you don't have any sensors at hand and you wanna trigger events just based on the movement direction. For example, if you wanted to do something with your visuals, your interactive installation, only when people uh, were walking to the left or to the right, you could do stuff, or as you can see, you can just control anything with these basic left, right, up and down directions. If you'd like to skip the video and just start using this component with all the relevant parameters mapped out for you, um, then you can find it on my Patreon, uh, along with a lot of other useful stuff. I tend to be a bit more active there than here on YouTube, so consider checking it out. Alrighty, let's start from a clean slate. I'm gonna put down a NDI in, because that's where I have my webcam image coming from, because OBS is also using it. There I am. And we need an optical flow from the palette. So palette is control B and there under the tools, you will find optical flow. And the optical flow basically gives us the direction of movement for each pixel of the incoming texture. So if I try to pause it here, um, I'm moving my hand, I guess, from right to left. And let's look at the pixel values by activating this viewer and hitting D. So if you look at some of these pixel values, you can see that the right channel is in the negative, meaning I was moving my hand from right to left, I guess, or the other way around, we will see soon. And we also have some green values because I guess I'm moving my hand a bit up and down also when I'm moving it to the left and right. But basically, yeah, this uh, optical flow is giving us these red and green channels. In the red channels, we have the left and right movement encoded. In the green channel, we have the up and down encoded for each pixel. And we're going to use all this data to get a general direction uh, from the incoming image. Let's start with only the left and right movement. So that means we need to isolate the right channel. I'm going to do that with a reorder. I'm going to output zero on the green and zero on the blues and get input one red. So now we have all the uh, red channel stuff here, which maybe we cannot really see now, but it's there. It's only, only red left and right information. So we have positive and negative pixels also depending on the direction. So this is where we are going to mainly uh, separate the, the data. So I'm going to put down a threshold, a threshold top. And in the threshold top, we're going to select less or equal and less or equal than zero. So we get only one direction not the other, and we're going to do the, the same, uh, but instead of less or equal, we're going to go to greater or equal. So in these two textures, we have now, uh, if I'm moving my hand to, to the left, we have more pixels here. If I'm moving it to the right, we have more pixels here because these are the, I guess, uh, negative values and these are going to be our positive values. Uh, next up, we're going to count these pixels. So I'm going to put down an analyze chop and operation, uh, not count, but let's sum them up. Um, and it's going to give us this blinking something. Uh, it's yeah, it's not pretty, but it contains the information that we need. I'm going to put down a null. We can do that with Alt N. Like so. And convert both of these 
to a chop like that let's only take one channel out of these great so now if we in principle subtract these two from each other we will get uh, a number which is either positive or negative depending on the direction so if we uh, combine chops subtract let's maybe filter this a bit because it's jumping quite a lot and let's put down a trail also so that we can see what's going on so I'm moving my hand to the left jumped up moving my hand to the right it jumped down so we are heading in the right direction seems to be quite reliable like so so to quickly recap what we did here we have the optical flow giving us for each pixel whether that pixel is moving to the left or to the right or not the pixel but the the thing contained by the pixels are moving to the left or to the right but we have this data for each pixel and what we want in the end is just simple chop data of the general direction of things moving on the camera so uh, we isolated everything with the reorder to the right channel meaning only to the left and the right because this only co also contains up and down in the green and we're gonna also do that in the other branch when we are done with this so we have only the red channel here and with the threshold we can uh, isolate only the negative pixels and only the positive pixels and with the analyze we count how many positive pixels there are and how many negative pixels there are we convert everything to chop now and if you subtract these two numbers um, we can get if there are more negative or more positive numbers and this number here is gonna give us how many more uh, positive or negative numbers there are in our optical flow so this is cool but what i want in the end is just um, one value if things are moving to the left or to the right i don't want this kind of noisy data i want something clean so i'm gonna rename these channels or this channel to left right and we have to we have to draw a line uh, where we say that okay this is now just noise or yeah we have to somehow contain this data a bit better so I'm gonna put down a logic chop and convert input on uh, off one outside bounds and these bounds I'm gonna I'm gonna define as minus uh, let's see so now even though I'm not really moving it's still jumping quite a lot maybe we can put a blur before everything kind of denoise our our data I think yeah that already looks much less noisy and let's look at some values I move my hand to the left it jumps up to 2000 ish other, other direction also so let's say that when this value reaches uh, minus 500 or 500 that's when it should be on so this is now inverted so I'm just gonna uh, channel pre-op invert and now we're getting a bit more reliable signal like that and to get just the direction I can put down a function chop 
and use the sign function sign 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 so this is gonna give us one if it's positive minus one if it's negative and if we now multiply these two together combat chops multiply we're gonna get minus one and one minus one one uh, I might want this to be the other way around, so I can just here multiply this by minus 1. To me it makes more sense for left to be minus 1 and right to be positive. I don't know why. Uh, we can do some more denoising, maybe. But yeah, this could be alright. We can also change the optical flow threshold. That can also help sometimes to make this a bit less noisy. But I feel like this is quite okay. Yeah. Cool. I like this. So we can do the same kind of deal for the green channel and I'm just gonna lazily copy and paste all this we don't need this trail anymore and instead of getting the red channel here we're gonna get red zero and green green from input one and in our yeah we can keep it like this it doesn't matter if it's red to the top two now in principle we have it up and down also. I'm going to rename this to down up. I want down to be minus one, up to be one. Like so. If you look at these, and we can just merge these two together. Put down a null, select all these, collapse it to a component, and let's use this data to control something. Let's do this circle. Let's move the circle. So we have the circle. I'm going to increase its resolution a little bit, decrease the radius. And let's use a speed chop. Let's limit it between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And let's look at what happens if we offset this. Going to the right, left. Right, it's a bit, uh, yeah, it's kind of like telekinesis, it's not fully reliable, but I've used this to my advantage in, in an installation recently where we didn't have any Kinect or any sensor, just webcam. So the value is that you have to change based on the lighting conditions because this is just taking the the camera image so it's taking just light information so depending on the lighting conditions uh, you have to change the bounds um, potentially or the threshold of the optical flow i don't recommend changing any of the other parameters here maybe the lambda i don't really know what it does, but yeah, I just leave it at this value. So the threshold, um, if you want to uh, threshold, you know, some movement, you want to ex exclude when it's just a little bit of movement, you can increase the threshold. But yeah, based on the lighting conditions, you might, you may want to change the bounds. And also you can play with the filter to give you some better results maybe. Uh, in the Patreon file you will find 
all the relevant uh, parameters that you might want to mess with or the map for you. I'm not gonna spend time on that in this video. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. And again, please check the Patreon. There's lots of uh, cool stuff there, much more than here on YouTube. So yeah, see you around and thanks for watching.